Now we have Christoph Schu, who I met at Tomorrow Internet, or it was called differently back then in Hamburg. AG. AG is a yeah. long time ago. Long time ago. From Hamburg. Um, here's your clicker. Thank yeah. you so much for the presentation. I missed you yesterday at the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hello everybody. Um, let me share with you the view on the travel tech market from our Lexstar perspective. Perhaps you know we're investing heavily into travel tech companies, and especially in Europe, and, and we like the space, and we like the companies, and we did a lot, a lot of analysis of this market, and I would like to share some of these analyses with you. So first of all, obviously, uh, it's a big market. That's always interesting for VC. It's uh, an eight trillion market per year. Uh, it's bigger than food, e-commerce, and advertising combined. So it's anywhere from a TAM total addressable market perspective really interesting. So, but what happened um, in that travel market, especially in the B2C market, is a big fragmentation in the last 20 years. So coming from the 90s, when some of you know these old catalogs where you could, as a consumer in a one-stop shopping experience, buy a package trip, it's now fragmented into category leaders. And I would like to ask you, um, on these brands here, who of you used more than five brands in the last year? Hands up. And who of you used more than 10 brands? You see, it's a fragmentation in well-known brands, um, and let's look into deeper into it. When you split it into waves, you see a clear um, system in it. You see that every five to 10 years, there was an evolution of new funded companies uh, with a new dedicated product. So, Coming from the two operators and two agents, where you were sitting face to face with your two, ag two agent, due to the GDS, the global distribution systems, the customer now was able to book um, from a big inventory hotels or flights. Starting with booking from Amsterdam and Expedia, coming into MetaSearch, um, the big success of the MetaSearch companies, Kayak and Skyscanner. Say, so who, uh, let's say who aggregated big inventory, but they just linked out. It was not a vertical integrated play, a play it was a linked out play. And then uh, come into the next gen of um, OTAs, online tour um, agencies and accommodation players, um, who, let's say, build a new sub-segment, whether it's vacation rental with Airbnb and home to go or it's tour and attractions with examples like Get Your Guide. And interestingly, so um, what's happening now, it's the revival of the package um, trip, um, pre-packaged, smart pre-packaged trip, like Tourlane, which is really interesting because 25 years now back from the tour operators, so there's a revival of packaging. And for the consumer, if you look the customer journey from discovery to um, transportation, whether it's flight or ground transportation, to accommodation, to tours and attractions. I have to say, uh, and you would um, say it as well, it's still a mess. So you have to look into different platforms which are really good, but it's not the one-stop shopping experience. And interestingly, um, what you see if you look into market sizes, whenever the platform is able to do a transaction on the site, it's a big market. Whenever it's just discovery mode, it's a small market. That's why every, nearly every platform is trying to enter into transaction from just a discovery approach. What happened to the incumbents? And this is uh, what happened in nearly every industry. You see um, the old incumbents like TUI or Thomas Cook or Accor, in terms of market cap, coming down from 25 or 10 billion down to five or less, and then you see the new uh, online players like Booking with 70 million, we couldn't get it on the chart here, with 70 million 
market cap or an Airbnb with a valuation of the last round of 40 billion. And even in Ojo, um, there are some rumors that the next round will be a 10 billion round. And that is meaning um, then Ojo would be bigger than a TripAdvisor and bigger than a TUI or a Thomas Cook in four years. So who financed that um, fragmentation of the market? And obviously, um, the VC industry, um, 47 billion in the last five years. Can you imagine 8,000 travel startups they have financed? And um, it's today a clear B2C financing, I have to say. Uh, there are new uh, companies like Travel Park who are really interesting, but it's less than 10% B2B financing. It's still a B2C financing game. So what we, what we also did, we analyzed the top 50 VC-funded travel companies, and you see just the top 50 is a massive market. 26 billion have been invested in the top 50. That means more than 500 million of each of these companies as investments, as total investment rounds. Market cap of more than 200 billion, about 500,000 employees, so it's a lot of concentration happening on the top 50 uh, travel companies. And what is also interesting, that um, if you take some examples of the top 50, you see here the size of the funding rounds. You see that the bubbles are getting bigger, and the bubbles are more often above 100. You see that only in, in from January to June, you see this incredible amount of big funding rounds, for example, of Get Your Guide of 480 million, of Cloak, of uh, Flixbus, unannounced, Ojo 150. Um, you see, it's a lot of money in the game of trouble ha happening now, and it's a, it's a marketing intensive place, so you need a lot of money to build your brand. When you then look deeper into, you see that um, Europe compared to non-Europe, meaning US and Asia, it's a clear, um, a clear uh, structure that uh, some big US VCs or PEs are dominating the travel industry. And in Europe, uh, we have some VCs, but uh, we are not able until today to finance such uh, rounds like the Asian and US ones doing this. There's a, a tremendous need to catch up, um, I have to say, on that. The good information is, on every dollar spend it into the travel tech industry, 27% is going to Europe. It's, by the way, the biggest share of every industry. So let's look into e-commerce. It's just 8% spent into Europe compared to the 27 in travel. And that is um, why because Europe is really strong. If you look on the top 50 I've shown you before, 22, so nearly half of them are from Europe, which is, in my view, a big success. The market cap is above 100 billion, and um, 300,000 employees are working in Europe for the travel tech industry. Let's look into, and you see, these are some of the brands who have done financing rounds above $100 million in total. So they're all, um, so they all out of Europe, and they are all strong beside Europe. This is the map of these European winners. And you see, interestingly, Germany is super strong, especially Berlin. You see Berlin with Get Your Guide, Omeo, Tourlane, home to girl and other brands. Um, it's, it's, um, I think it's good news for us as an ecosystem that we can create global winners in travel tech. Why is that the case? It's the case because Europe is on the one hand super attractive, it's the biggest continent in terms of travel volume, but on the other hand it's the most complex market you can enter in terms of countries, languages and these kind of things. And my Hypothesis is um, the company, the startup who has entered 
and be number one in Europe has all the chances to win in the other continents because it's a big advantage if you are successful in Europe and then enter into other markets. Let me finish um, with our view what's next in the travel industry. I've shown you the different waves uh, we have seen in the last 20 years. And there are, for us, four interesting trends uh, we are really following. The one trend is the branded customer experience. We think that in this fragmented market, you have to think about the customer experience from the booking on the site, from the discovery mode, until the real experience, whether it's a hotel or whether it's a guided tour or whatever. So this is super important, and we look closely into these branded customer experience things, which you can also find with Ojo. Smart travel advisors, um, for sure, um, I don't have to explain voice, AI, v, v, uh, VI, and all these kind of things, are super important, but we haven't found any big player. Could be just a feature for the existing players. We think that vacation rental market can become bigger than the hotel market if regulation plays with us. This is something we carefully have to look into. And finally, uh, as I said before, return of package holidays. Because it's such a mess for the customer to book with different champions, um, I think there's room for package holidays again. Thanks a lot, and um, send me an email if you like to show us something in terms of startups we are really interested in too. Thanks.